hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. I'm Maiva Cifuentes, your host. And today I'm speaking to Lily Ubaja, who is a content strategist. And she's developed a framework called the Lima Framework, uh, L-E-M-A, which is for logic, explicitness, memorability, and actionability. And we're actually having a special episode today because we are going to look at an existing blog post and break it down on how they can better use this framework to make remarkable content, which at the end of the day, we are all trying to do. So, hey, Lily, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. I'm excited to to do this. So... Um, mm-hmm. We're going to dive into the actual blog post in a second, uh, which is actually by Remote, and it's one that actually is published. We'll put the link to it called How to Reduce Employee Turnover with a Strong Talent Retention Strategy. Um, But before we dive into dissecting this blog post, walk us through the Lima framework. Okay. So the Lima framework is... um a framework for writing content that is logical and explicit and memorable and actionable. And um, these four elements, I feel like these are the things that makes content stand out. These are the things that make um, people read your content, bookmark it, share it, like feel something. It makes them feel something to act on it, get results, and then remember your brand, right? And uh, so logic, kind of like describes how your audience would think about your article. If you've ever ra- read a piece of content where you're going through it and suddenly you feel lost, like you can't remember what <laughs> you're actually looking yeah. for in the beginning and you can't really tell where this piece of content is going. That's because the logic with that piece of content is off. So logic is how you keep readers on the page. And that's why I developed the, the this framework to make sure that you're keeping readers on the page and serving them in a way that meets them exactly for where they are, like something that is so specific to where they are right now in their journey. And then when, when you bring in the other elements, the explicitness and the memorability and the actionability, these are all like little bits of um, um, things that make your content shine. like. If I were to say create remarkable content, for example, like what does remarkable even mean? Like my definition for remarkable might be different from your definition for Mm -hmm. remarkable. What I think of remarkable might be content that people see and bookmark and maybe share with their friends. Whereas what you think of remarkable might be content that um, has like so many stats and data and expert quotes and stuff like that. Another person may see remarkable content as content that speaks to them, like has this um, voice and tone and emotional pull, right? So explicitness is being like completely clear about what you mean so that the audience is not left guessing. Like you're taking them on the full journey. You're not, it's not fiction. So you're not um, leaving it open-ended for them. And then the the element of memorability, like I said, I feel like this is one of the um, strongest points of the Lima framework is so important, especially now that so many people are using AI, going to AI to find answers and maybe using AI to create content. Memorability is the element that you add to your content that makes people think of your brand when they think about a topic that is relevant to you. Like the minute I go to Google and I want to search for something about maybe content strategy or something, I want your brand to be so memorable that I say, I type on Google content strategy, flying cats marketing, because I just want results from you. So um, the final element, actionability, is like I, I said earlier, being able to help your um audience act on the contents that you've uh created i love to use this example from cx Dell. i can't remember exactly what the blog post was but it was talking about how to cook rice or how to kill a chicken or something and it's it was just like you know let me use the example of how to kill a chicken so grab your knife and cut the chicken's head off and um 
Um, oh, prefer that this is how to cook a rice graphic. example. <laughs> how, to cook a, how to cook rice yeah. example, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, uh, you know, you could say uh, maybe um, measure your rice and <laughs> and uh, wash it and um, put it in boiling water. And I, these are obvious things. Everyone would know that you have to go through the steps. But like, how many measures of rice do I need to um, to uh, bake to serve to make one serving? What temperature does my water need to be at to be able to like? These are things that make the content actionable to know exactly what they need to do and to be able to see what they need to do. In the case of B2B SaaS, that is including things like screenshots, right? Mm -hmm. I want to see what you're describing. I want to, like, the minute I go into a tool, I want to have a mental picture that is so clear of what I need to do. I want to be able to go straight to the right section in the tool instead of jumping around and, like, abandoning it. And I feel like this is very important because... People, when people search, or like when people are surfing the internet and they find a piece of content and they read it, they're not reading it just for the sake of like pleasure or what. Like the point is that they want to achieve something. And results is what makes people remember your brand. Yeah. Is what makes them trust you. Okay. So I, I love all of those steps. It, it makes a lot of sense. And, um, a lot of people don't follow all of these steps, even though it feels like you really, really should. Uh, yeah. One thing that I'm not totally clear on is the memorability one. So mm -hmm. it sounds like if you make your content remarkable, which if it's logical, if it's very explicit with great examples and very actionable, what what things can we do? Unless, I mean, maybe we're going to dive into that when we break into, when we uh, di dissect this article that we're going to do. Um, but what kind of things do you mean other than logic, explicitness, actionability? What are the memorable things that you can do in content? Um, so I love to think of um, things like coined concepts, novelty, mm. relatability as things that make your content memorable. There's no one who got into content between... Uh, I, I can't remember when the Skycarper technique came out, but like, there's no one who got into content before 2019, 20, 2020. You know, the time frame when the Skycarper technique was everything. And the reason why we remember it so much is because of the coined concepts that was attached yeah. to it, right? It's not because there was anything strange or new or like people were already um, adding more content to what they already had on the page or to like out, um, outdo their competitors, right? But Brian came and he gave it a name and he explained it in depth. Like this is exactly what you do. And so whenever you just think of um, the skyscraper technique, it, it gives you this clear picture of what you need to do. So coin concepts is one way to do that. The Lima framework, for example, like yeah. I haven't even done a lot of um, marketing for this um, framework. It just, it sells itself because when one person hears it, they, it's something you know, right? But having those four letters, breaking them down in such a way that it reminds you, it instantly reminds you of the um, elements you need to be judging your work against. It makes you remember. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love coined concepts because then when people start using it, using the name, especially something that sticks in your mind because it's so visual as well, mm -hmm. or it's said in a way like Lima rolls off the tongue, skyscraper, yeah. you know, okay, I'm building on top of something. Yeah. I know there's also um, the guys from content distribution that did content velocity or publishing velocity. So these are all uh, memorable concepts. So yeah, that does, that does help me understand that okay so let's just let's just dive into it so we have this article here uh by remote.com how to reduce employee turnover with a strong talent retention strategy so this is already written it's fully written it's published it's super long if you see at the top it says 26 minute read so you want to hope that i guess this must be like a pillar page or something there's a lot of stats on here um where's the first place you start if you want to revise this for the lima framework so um, let me look at, let me bring that up to your screen for those people who will be able to see. 
see it, right? Yeah, so we'll, yeah, we can share it. I think you can share it on the screen. And for those who are just listening, we'll read through what we're talking about anyway. But for those who are watching, so you can see the article as well. Are you sharing it? Yeah. Can you see okay, it? Okay, yes. Yes, we see okay. it. Okay, awesome. So I copied this into um, a Google Doc. Before I touched it, and I haven't done much, before I touched it, the title was How to Reduce Employee Turnover with a Strong Talent Retention Strategy. And the slog was employee turnover, which like anyone in SEO knows that the slog is typically the keyword, which means that they're probably targeting employee turnover with this article, right? And so the first thing I would do is search intent. What is the search intent for this? If we look at okay, employee yes. turnover for for um, on Google, so most of the pieces here are what is, what is, definition, calculation, cost, calculation, turnover. Like there's barely anything that says how to um, how to reduce employee turnover. So right out of the gates, when I saw this, I was like, oh, we can't really use this because it's completely off, like the um, search intent is off. But when I looked at the article itself, it looks like they, I left a note here. So the header promises one thing, but the article goes in another di direction. And the direction the article mm. goes in is actually where it should go. It's just not in the right structure, right? So if we were writing okay. a how to, if we were writing a how to to match this other title, what we'd need to do is actually call out specific strategies instead of this that they have here. You know the um, topics where they talk about what employee retention and what why it's um, a metric they need to track. Why um, you know the stats that they have this is basically an um a research report that they have done and like publicized right right oh yeah okay so that's inter interesting because the keyword is employee turnover but then the it's more about employee retention which is like the opposite of each other i mean it's the same could kind of be a similar thing and so you're saying that um the search intent is wrong because search intent is mostly informational about what is employee turnover. Uh, and then they have chosen a how to search intent, but since the how to is probably more relevant to the audience, I see here that you changed it to what it is plus how to fix it. So you, you're still tying in targeting the right audience rather than somebody who, because if you, if you're, they're targeting HR managers, right? So yeah. They're not going to be Googling what is employee turnover. Exactly. Per se. Exactly. So um, what I do with every um, article that I write or edit is from the um, piece we saw, there is this keyword, the employee turnover, that is the obvious keyword for it. The target audience, I don't have access to the brief, so I don't know what the target audience is. But from my understanding, the target audience would be HR man managers who worry that their employee turnover might be affecting ROI. Now, why do I get this specific with the target audience? <laughs> I want to um, write to one person, an audience of one. Like I want the context to be so specific that the person who is nearest to the point of conversion finds it the most useful. We're not going to exclude every other um, aspects of our audience, but like we want to focus on this one person, right? So I love to answer three questions. I love um, I love to pose three questions to the writers. What do they know, this target audience? What do they want to know? And what is it that they should know that they're not thinking about right now? What these three things do is what they want to know, what they know already are things that we can gloss over. Like we don't need to dwell on them. On, on them. And in this case, the audience already understands the definition of the term employee turnover. Like they already have a vague idea what it is you see in the next section that they might not really know if what they're experiencing is employee turnover, which would want to clarify, but without drawing so much attention to it that it feels like um, we're dumping things down for them, right? Mm -hmm. We want to meet them at their, their knowledge level. They also understand that the lower the turnover rates, the better the ROI for hiring, right? 
what they want to know is, and I like to think of this as you can find this from going in, in forums and stuff and like finding out what your audience wants to know. But I feel like the easiest way to do this is just to think if you were speaking to a friend, say a friend who is a small um, business owner or a HR manager at a company and they feel like their employees are churning faster than maybe faster than what would be obtainable. What would they ask you if you had a good employee um, um, retention rate? they might want to clarify that what they're experiencing is actually turnover like maybe some people have gotten new jobs that they outgrew and they didn't really have um space for those people to move up in the career ladder and so they might be like okay this person left but they didn't really leave because of something we could control right so they want to know is this classified as um bad turnover <laughs> right yeah. They also probably want to benchmark their turnover rates against what is out there. They want to be able to calculate their rates. Um, they want to know how, like, should they? How serious is this? Should I be worrying about it? What what effects does this have on business? Gotcha. Right. They want to know what causes turnover and how to bring down their turnover rates. Now, coming to the final question that you need to answer in your brief before you go on is what. What is it that they should know that they're not thinking about right now? So, and this is just off the top of my head because I haven't really researched <laughs> the topic, right? But I feel like turnover itself isn't the problem. Turnover is usually a sign that something might be wrong with either the way they approach hiring or the company culture. And this is something that you want to put in the, like, you want to base your, um, this, the answer to this question is what I feel that everyone should base as their, the thesis for their post. Like, this is the novel idea that no one has told you about. Well, like, we're gonna cover all these things, but remember that this is the main point here, right? And so moving on, the next thing would be, after answering all those questions, to draw an outline based on this, what they want to know. So current outline okay. that we have, the current outline that we have talks about, um, let's just look at it quickly. It says why employee retention is a success metric you need to track. This is, I would find this insulting if I was a um, EHR manager. I know, yeah. I know I need to track it. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there are the sessions where there are stats. I feel like all of this are good but they need to fall on the stuff here. So following this, and this is 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 um this is written according to the logic, like the first question the person would have would be what? And then um what's a good rate? How do I calculate my rate? Like just to be sure that I'm not mixing up um my rates, right? So if I were to draw the outline, I would go Am I experiencing turnover or something like that? Like this is not final, but like this is the vibe that the yeah. section needs to give. Am I experiencing turnover? Oh yeah, okay. So this is the logic we're seeing. Somebody's trying to figure out what kind of turnover is a bad turnover. So mm -hmm. this is the logic part of the framework. And yeah. for the sorry for the for the sake of time, because we only have ten minutes ten minutes left, we have logic yeah. here. The next step that we want to be looking at is explicitness, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I was actually going to say that we wouldn't be able to go through the entire framework during the time no. frame. <laughs> oh, we don't but have to. We can actually do a part two or <laughs> go through the earlier parts. I want to do it, follow your process here. Yeah. No, but it, it's fine. Um, so... The logic itself, um, I feel like it's most times is where you can save an article that has a structure right, even if the other elements are not right. But if structure is messed up, it's going to give the editor so much headache that they just throw it out. So that's where I like mm -hmm. to focus, focus my attention the most on. So let me just, um, let's move on to the other aspects. Actionability.
Well, let's use this other article to talk about action. Sure. So we did have another article prepared for this, which is called, What is A-B Testing? A Complete Guide with Examples. And this is in a doc that you sent me. I don't know if this is actually published somewhere. Yeah, it was one of the submissions that we received for this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to um, find a, se a section that needs to be actionable. So this section talks about analyzing the website. First of all, the header itself is not actionable. Analyze your website. What, I'm, what am I analyzing on my website, right? Right. Okay, so it's a step-by-step -step guide, and then step one says analyze your website. What do you mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, like what, what should I analyze? Should I analyze the copy on my website? Should I analyze? Where do I go to analyze it? So the first thing would be fixing this, first of all. Say analyze your uh Analyze so are you saying because it does go down there's that the section in the subheading uh where it just explains you know it breaks things down a little bit more websites performance data such as traffic and conversion metrics are you saying that the subheading should be more explicit yes yes it should yeah. be if we have so much going on here then maybe we should be breaking them down into several sections. Because if you want to go into it, like in depth into it, you need to focus on one thing at a time. So from what the um, stuff we see here, it looks like what we want to analyze is performance metrics. So okay. analyze your website's performance. Yes. Right. So it's just, it's just getting a little bit more specific. Yeah. I mean, that always makes sense. You know, they say, um, if you're going to say it will save you so much money or it would save you so much time instead say it would save you on average of a $60,000 salary exactly. or it's going to save you 20, 20 hours a week or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, like for this section now, after saying this, the next thing you you would do is to say why, like why do you need to analyze the website's performance metrics? Because you need to draw so and so information. And the next thing would be the how, which is missing here. Like if we say Google Analytics is a helpful tool for measuring goals, we want to go into Google Analytics, take screenshots to show how to analyze for yeah. new versus re returning visitors, right? Yeah. Um, screenshots are such a good way of showing. And I think one bonus, something that um, makes some screenshots stand out over others is circling what where you want the eye to go, showing yeah. people what they should be looking at. Because sometimes people put screenshots and it's the whole thing. And I say, what am I supposed to be looking at here? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's yeah. also just helping guide people. Yeah. And, and sometimes there are like lots of, I've had screenshots where you have to have um, a number and maybe an arrow that points to three different steps happening on the screenshot. Tools like um, screencast or mapping, like so many screencast, um, screen, um, screenshot tools have that function where you can number the steps on the screenshot. Yeah. Yeah, I use CleanShot mm. and it has all of that on there. So, okay, so... Yeah. We covered logic and it's kind of the, it's a mix of the search intent and the buyer, what's useful for them. We have explicitness. And then we did talk about memorability in the sense of uh, coining a term, um, just making, making, adding an aspect that doesn't exist in other content. Yeah. And we have covered a little bit of actionability. I think we covered it mostly in theory, but um like you said, it's just, can I repeat, <laughs> can I go and now do this thing? Or do I still, or is this all theory? Do I know exactly what I'm supposed to do other than just analyze your website? But what am I looking for exactly on there? Um, is there anything, is there anything else that you think people should be, how uh, people should be using this framework while they're writing? People should um, prioritize those first three questions, of course, and then make sure that the outline itself is set. Because like I said before, logic is, is like the most important thing. And then when you have yeah. those outlines, um, when you have the outline rather, and the headers are all like in sync with what they should be, like 
the headers described like i like to think of it as can i read through the headers of the piece and come away with enough knowledge that i can do the things you say that we should do if i already knew how to do them like do the outlines give me the full picture yeah. that is one and that's then, that's such a good point yeah and then in the sections itself how um answer the questions what why how when who in the um in the flow in the formula that someone who is like if we were having a conversation and you were talking about it what would be my next question and the stuff that you you, you answer is it clear enough for me to answer to to like understand without bringing up another question and if it's bringing up another question you should be able to trash that question as well all in all i think to... to answer the question Sorry. to trash it to trash oh, the okay. question to answer it i think all in all the most important thing is specificity i think that is what happens what is um the constant um thing in all of the elements of the lima framework um, specificity from logic to explicitness to memorability to actionability your article is going to be different depending on the audience level even for the same topic right even for the mm -hmm. same topic their knowledge level is going to determine how specific what the specificity for your article looks like so like that is just it keep the audience the at the back of your mind when you create they are the homing beacon love it all right thank you for sharing this framework uh specificity is the moral of the story i think it makes such a huge difference i know when i'm editing pieces that's the feedback i'm always giving please be more specific please be more specific <laughs> and it ties everything together so thank you for sharing that with us um, if people want to connect with you where's the best place for them to reach out um people can reach me on linkedin and twitter and mastodon at lily Obadger on my website um lilyobadger.com and they can learn more about the Lima framework at marketingcyborg.com. Great. Uh, we will share the link to the framework. There's a really detailed uh, blog post that covers it and has a lot of great examples on there. Um, so thank you for your time, Lily. It was great chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.